Now, I want to turn, in my capacity as Shadow Minister for Home Affairs, Immigration and Citizenship, to the issue of temporary visa holders. And let me say right up front, I actually agree with the Prime Minister when he says that the temporary visa holders in Australia should go home during this health crisis. He's right. I'm sure many of those temporary visa holders would like to go home during this crisis. The reality is, for the 1.6 million visa holders in Australia, many of them, I dare say most of them, are not able to go home right now. They're not able to go home because borders have been closed. They are not able to go home because international airlines have been shut down. So the reality is, most temporary visa holders are now stuck here in Australia. No matter how often the Prime Minister says they should go home, the reality is most of them simply cannot. That means that they are here in Australia during, for the duration of this health crisis. Now, yesterday I had a Zoom call with migrants living in Australia on temporary visas. These are people who have jobs or have recently lost them because of the coronavirus crisis. One of them said to me that they feel like they are currently living through the certainty of the uncertainty. Well, that's what we're all living through right now. We're all facing this crisis together. I want to acknowledge of the 1.6 million visa holders, which that figure includes New Zealanders, the government has, through this package, given 444 visa holders, people from New Zealand, access to JobKeeper. I thank them for that. It is a position Labor has been advocating. But regardless where visa holders have come from or what visa they might be on, these people are members of our community, they're our neighbours, our co-workers, our friends. These people are like you and I. They work hard, they pay taxes, they are building lives and relationships here in Australia. And for 1.1 million of them, they are not eligible for JobKeeper. Many of these people will have been in Australia for years. Some of them will have built their own businesses. And the reality is, this virus is not going to check anyone's visa status before it infects them. All of us in the country are vulnerable to the COVID-19 virus. A survey undertaken by Unions New South Wales of over 5,000 respondents showed that 70% of temporary migrants in Australia are now unemployed as a direct impact of COVID-19. One in two temporary migrants are currently living off savings and expect these to run out within a matter of weeks. A staggering 43% of temporary migrants are already skipping meals on a regular basis. 98.7% of temporary migrants received no form of government support and only 1.5% had access support from a charitable organization. Now, we acknowledge the government has also uh, listened to another of Labor's requests to give temporary visa holders early access to their superannuation. I acknowledge in the chamber here Senator Hume, the Assistant Minister for Superannuation, who has made this change. It's a position that Stephen Jones, my colleague in the other place, uh, had been advocating. This is not a position Labor would normally advocate for, early access to super, but given the large number of people on temporary visas in Australia and the absence of other support, this is a fair and equitable proposition. But despite these small steps, this is not enough. If the 1.1 million visa holders in Australia who don't have access to JobKeeper, who don't have access to JobSeeker either, are not able to access any form of income support, they're going to be forced to keep working or keep seeking work. They risk homelessness. They risk impoverishment. If they cannot self-isolate, that puts every public health measure we are currently enacting at risk. It is no good for the Australian community to be practicing self-isolation if we have over a million people living in the country who cannot self-isolate because they lack the income support or access to medical testing or treatment. We risk prolonging this crisis if we ignore what is happening to over a million people currently living in this community. Now, today's legislation does give the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, broad discretion to expand JobKeeper to other classes of workers by regulation. And I would say this to the Treasurer. It is in our national interest for you to do this. It is in our public health interest for you to expand JobKeeper to temporary uh, migrant workers. The Treasurer will be able to, with the stroke of his pen, 
make this change. We don't have to recall parliament. We don't have to have another piece of legislation passed. And this discretionary power is similar to the one given to the Minister for Social Services, Anne Rustin, at the last sitting of parliament when it came to job seeker. She is able, with a stroke of her pen, to incorporate temporary visa holders into the social services system. So following the passage of this legislation today, the only two people standing in the way of temporary visa holders being able to access support, income support, social services support, are the Treasurer Josh Frydenberg and the Minister for Social Services Ann Rustin. They have been given extraordinary powers by this parliament in this extraordinary and unprecedented crisis, and we encourage them in the sake of Australia's national interest to use those powers. Now, migrants, both newly arrived and permanently settled, have stepped up to support the broader Australian community during this crisis. Colombo Social, a Sri Lankan restaurant in Newtown in my state of New South Wales, provides employment for asylum seekers and, and supports their integration into Australia. The restaurant, of course, is now closed, but they're keeping the kitchen open to help feed vulnerable communities in Sydney, providing up to 2,000 meals a day free of charge. I've seen the Sikh community here in Canberra, Turbans for Australia, they call themselves, currently on the streets of our capital, delivering hot meals and hampers. And as the immigration minister said himself on the weekend, there are 8,000 skilled medical professionals on temporary visas helping fight the coronavirus on the front line. This includes thousands of international student nurses on visas, as well as nurses on working holiday maker visas who've had their visa requirements relaxed by the government so they can work as nurses after Labor called for this to happen. The irony here is almost grotesque, though. We have thousands of temporary migrants working on the front line of our health system to keep Australians safe and well, safe and well as possible during this COVID-19 crisis. But if those very same temporary migrant workers fell sick themselves, what kind of support would they get from Australia? Would they get income support to self-isolate? Would they get access to Medicare, medical testing and treatment? It is grotesque to consider the fact that we are relying on temporary migrant workers to help us through this crisis, but we are not giving them the support that they need to be part of our community and to be included in the measures we are all taking, the extraordinary measures to keep our community and our economy safe. Now, like so many actions by this government, we have been frustrated that they have failed to have a comprehensive plan to manage the return of Australians back to this, to this country, those Australians who are stranded overseas, as well as to assist temporary migrants to depart. My colleague Senator Wong has been encouraging the government to deploy Qantas and Virgin to bring Australians stuck overseas back home. I wrote to the Minister for Immigration on the 20th of March to say, what a good idea. Why don't you use the outbound legs of those flights to help temporary migrants have affordable options to depart Australia before the brunt of this crisis hits us? But regrettably, the government has chosen to bury their head in the sand. The Prime Minister, the Minister for Home Affairs, indeed the Minister for Social Services in this chamber today can cry out that temporary migrants should go home all they like. But when international borders are closed and there are no international airline flights, to tell them they should go home is simply futile. The reality is many of the 1.6 million temporary visa holders in Australia are trapped here. Putting in place a plan to help temporary migrants depart Australia should not be beyond the government, and rescuing Australian citizens trapped overseas should not either, and supporting those people who are trapped here to keep Australians' public health as safe as possible should be a sensible measure this government takes up. I'll conclude on this point, just as Labor's committing to helping all Australians, we're committing to scrut committed to scrutinising the government's response to the COVID-19 crisis. We will do exactly as the, we will do that in the newly established Senate Select Committee chaired by Senator Gallagher to ensure all Australians are being protected during this crisis, indeed that all people in Australia are being protected during this crisis. I look forward to being a member of the committee and working with my colleagues, the crossbench and the opposite, members opposite alike. We're here today because this crisis has ground our economy, our community and our way of life to a halt. Australians are resilient, but at times, they look to their government, they look to their parliament for help. 
And this is exactly what this package does. The measure of a society is how it treats the most vulnerable in its community. And this package, while it is flawed, will help millions of Australians who are incredibly vulnerable right now. And Labor is very pleased that the government has taken up the recommendation to have a direct wage subsidy. This is a significant moment in Australian history. It's a significant move by this government, and we acknowledge it. And it comes after significant lobbying by the Australian trade union movement, the Labor Party, the business community, and civil society. And we're pleased the government have listened. We will continue to work together to fight through these health and economic crises as Australians, because the livelihood and the lives of all Australians depend upon it. And Madam Acting Deputy President, as I conclude, I foreshadow I will be moving the second reading amendment circulated in my name. Thank you, Senator.